Now, I know that there are some distinguished guests and visitors this morning. A welcome to all of you. Uh, just to let you know what we're going to do, there is in the tradition of this church a children's sermon, and Deacon Pat and I are going to do that together. But please understand that that's not just for children. Uh, it actually is the preface for what all of us are going to hear. So with that in mind, if all the kids who are here could come down front. Have a seat. Now, how, how many of y'all know what this is? It's a cane. Actually, the people who actually do use this in the field, they call it their stick. But it also has another name. Can you think of what it is? Go ahead. Yes, sir. It's a staff. That's right. Who carries one of these? A shepherd. So why does a shepherd carry a staff? Do you have any idea? So he can guide the sheep. There are three things, there are three things that this is used for by someone who is a shepherd. A shepherd's actually a really hard job. It's anything but somebody who's sort of standing there with no, no dirt on him, looking rather beatific like we see some in the stained glass windows. It's work. And they have to stay up all night. So, there are three things that you need this for if you're a shepherd. First of all, you need it yourself because you're leading the sheep all through the country, which means you're on rocky ground. So you need a staff to help keep you stable so you don't fall over or it catches you when you fall. So the first thing, it's like a hiking stick in that sense. You need it so that you can walk without falling over. The second reason you need one of these what happens if I do this? What does that look like? Weapon. Yeah. He said a weapon. <laughs> I said, that's exactly right. Who fights the sh Who wants the sheep to eat? Wolves. All kinds of animals, actually. Lions. That's right. So, that's right. Can you roar? Uh. <laughs> Can you roar? Come on. <laughs> in other words, this is, a, this is an offensive weapon. So that if somebody's coming against the sheep, what does the shepherd do? Boom. He fights them. He keeps them away. His job, you see, is to protect the sheep. Then there's a third reason he has this stick. Why do you think there's another reason? Can you think of what it is? Well, I guess I need to show you. I need somebody to stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Now, what's your name? Michael. Michael. Now, here's Michael what I want you to do. I want you to start walking that way. No, no, keep, come back, Michael. Thank you very much. You see, sometimes sheep have a mind of their own. Sometimes sheep need to be corrected. It's not that they don't, they just aren't very smart. <laughs> for, all, for all Michael the sheep knew, he could have been walking right into a pack of wolves, just over the horizon. He doesn't know that. There's safety in numbers. And Jesus the shepherd wants to protect the sheep. So, can you do, again, three things. What's the first reason a shepherd carries a staff? That's exactly right. Michael's a smart young man. It's because it can be rocky. If you see pictures of Israel and the hills, it's, it's very rocky soil. So, to keep you stable. What's the second reason the shepherd carries a staff? A weapon. That's right. To fight against those who want to do what? That's right, who want to eat the sheep. Third reason. What's the third reason that a shepherd carries one of these? Keep Michael to, in line. That's right, to keep the sheep in line. Now, these are the very things 
that Jesus is doing in your life. He wants to help keep you steady, particularly when you're walking in a difficult part of your life, to keep you from falling. He wants to fight on your behalf against the enemies that come against you. And if you've made a commitment to say, I will follow you, he takes you very seriously. So if he says, go this way, and you're going that way, he wants to use this to bring you back in line. Not because he's mean, but because he loves you. Because if you go that way, there could be a pack of wolves over there. And he wants to keep you safe. You see, we sang his love, his love, his love is everlasting. We sang Jesus loves me. How does Jesus demonstrate his love? By the very things that we just said. By steadying us when life is hard. By fighting on our behalf when we need somebody to fight on our behalf. And all of us do from time to time. And to correct us when we're going the wrong way. That's who he is as a shepherd. Thank you all very, very much. You all can go back and sit down. Now, part in essence, part B. This represents Jesus' ministry to each of us. But it's more than just his individual ministry to each of us. I carry this as the bishop of the church, both because it is a description of my ministry as a bishop, as it were, as the chief shepherd over the Diocese of Central Florida. And also as someone who is subject to Jesus' ministry of shepherd to me. Because if I'm not yielded to this crook, I have no right to be able to extend it to anybody else. It is a deep reminder of the responsibility that I bear to walk with integrity before God. But also, this represents not just Jesus' ministry, or mine, it represents the ministry of the church. You see, and this is one of the things that I love about St. John the Baptist, the congregation I mean, is that they understand that God has given them a community responsibility. That they do not exist merely to build each other up, although they do that. They're actually called to be this in a community. To be, as it were, to switch analogies, salt and light in the community where God has planted them. And one of the things that distinguishes St. John the Baptist in its 120 year history is that they have taken seriously that call. So let's look at this again. Who in the community needs people to come and stand beside them and steady them because life is hard. You see, that's the church's ministry to the community. There's a reason Jesus emphasizes over and over again, care for the weak, care for the sick, care for the poor, because that's his heart. That is his heart. And a church that claims to be under the authority of the Good Shepherd, demonstrates that care to those in need, number one, because we've been the recipients. We have received forgiveness when we didn't deserve it. We received mercy when we didn't deserve it. He saved us from hell even though we didn't deserve it. He has steadied us in our walk, right? If Jesus is steadying us in our walk, then to be in this community, the good St. John the Baptist mean, we need to be taking up this staff and caring for others because that's what Jesus is doing for us. In other words, it's never that we only receive. It's that it flows through. So the ministry that is coming in us is what God desires to flow through us. So, steadying those in need. Secondly, who in your community needs people to come and fight on their behalf? Because the system is not interested. Because neighbors are ignoring. Because family members are not caring. 
Who are the people who actually need somebody to come and stand beside them and say, what can we do to help make a difference? It could be legal assistance. It could be education. It could be someone giving them what they need in terms of counseling and care. It could be prayer because more often than not, to fight the battle in prayer is often the thing that breaks loose in the natural what needs to happen in somebody's life. Does that make sense? In other words, we're going to be commissioning somebody in the daughters, for example. I have to tell you, I deeply rely on the daughters. And the reason is, is because you can, it can get tough out there. And knowing that I have people who are standing beside me, in front of me, and behind me in prayer, tells me that I am literally surrounded by the powerful presence of God, fighting, fighting on my behalf. There isn't one of us here that doesn't need that. Right? I hope none of us are too proud to say, oh, I need somebody to pray for me right now. Because all of us do. And God has built that kind of interdependence between us. And then the last thing, of course, is the correction. There are plenty of people who used to rely on families, bosses at their job, to work with people, to help raise them up into positions of responsibility, who loved them enough to correct them when they needed correcting. Oh, all of us do, by the way, right? Some things you never outgrow. But the fact of the matter is, is that a part of what we're wrestling with as a society is that people in responsible leadership positions do not take that kind of care to mentor, to correct, and to reach out. And so we have many, 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 many people who should have learned lessons that they have never learned, who do not understand the need that they might have for correction because I should be free to do whatever I want to do. Right? See, that's what they would say. And the answer to that is actually no. You're not free to do whatever you want to do. You're actually free to serve. To serve the common good. To reach out to your neighbors. To care for people. To give sacrificially. To reach up some, down and help somebody else who might need your helping hand. You're not free to spend your money any way you want as if the world doesn't need your donations. You are not free to only take your time to take care of you when there's a world that is in need of men and women who are willing to care. All of us need this in our lives. And if Jesus is correcting us, he wants to use us that we might mentor and help raise up others, including when necessarily correction for the common good to which God has called us. You see, that's what it means for a church to take on the ministry of the shepherd in the community where they serve. Sisters and brothers, if it's not us, who's going to do it? We've had too much of people saying, that's not my problem. Now it's all of our problems. And so my, my plea to you is number one, submit to Jesus, to his work of stabilizing, of protecting, and correcting in your life. Don't be what the Bible describes as stiff-necked, but instead be willing to yield to his care, because it is, in fact, his care. But in so doing, be willing to stand with others and say, how can we serve the community where God has placed us? How can we be that people that manifests the love and the power of this good shepherd who has laid down his life for us? That we also might serve others that they too might see the light of Christ, that they too might begin to stand a little taller, that they too might be willing to walk with a level of care and compassion and responsibility because that has what has been just demonstrated to them. If not us, who? So as I think about this congregation, especially as we celebrate 
its illustrious 120-year history, as we think about the future and what God might be calling this church to in this great city of Orlando where we have been placed, may God raise up in our midst men and women who are willing to take this thing and say, I too will serve for the sake of the Savior in the community where God has placed me. I think that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We're about to make some pretty serious commitments as we reaffirm what God has done and what we have said yes to if we have been baptized and confirmed. Don't let them please be empty words. But let them be words that again affirm with integrity your commitment to be servants of Jesus Christ in the community where God has placed you. Let us pray.